Look at that light at back. Do you know if you ever, uh, I didn't know I had a light at back. Do you know if you ever have a crash with one of these in the Independent River? And you're back, you're knackered, aren't you? you? You'll never be able to recover. I don't think so, anyway. I don't think so at all. But, but yeah, it's uh, the sky bias is just, it's out of control, isn't it? It's out of control. Um, we're talking grown men here that should know better. We're talking grown men that should know a lot better. They should know a lot better, but they're not other, they're not gonna ruin it for themselves. Like I've just said to you there, we're talking men here in the late 30s. They're earning a fortune and they can get another 20 years doing this. Until they upset somebody or until the hierarchy changes, like I've been told there's going to be some big changes in the next nine to ten months at Sky. They've already shook it up with all dates, haven't they? If you notice, what you do is you get a paper and pen, and you count who does so many appearances on Sky, and you get to see who's getting all the dates and a wind. I've got it all logged at home. Macklin and Barker are becoming permanent fixtures, but Barker's hanging around that. Matchroom Boxing YouTube channel. Do you know they invented that for Barker? So he could have a job. Did you know that? So you've got to get it to Darren Barker. He plays the game, doesn't he? He plays the game considering Daniel Gill beat him and dropped him and lost decision. Barker's still dining out on it. So, and the story around it all. You always create these stories, which is good, isn't it? But are they all true? Barker's story was true, but there's some stories that have been created by Matchroom that load of rubbish. Bad driving that in my arse here. When I washed my car today, I was blasting him through here. But now, I'm not happy with the old cesspit. There's a bad taste in my mouth. And what I'm going to do I'm just going to plod on because I'm soon going to be itching targets that I've set myself. But when I get these targets with channel it next three months well, then I'm going to be in a strong position. And if people are right with me, and people want to come on board and they've got a camera, and you've got a car, I might start helping people out because I'm going to be in a strong position then. But first I've got to help myself out, I know, and this channel's not, it's not financially in it, oh is it really? It's just an hobby, where we blow a bit of steam off. And it keeps me occupied from taking drugs, doesn't it? Because if I weren't doing this channel, I'll show you where I'd be. I'm going to show you now. Let me just, just slow through here. I would be down there. I'd be up here. Oh, is that a gritter? I thought that were a gritter. I'd be up here, and what I'd be doing is a lane up here where I used to go. It's just up here, well, a little, not a lane, it's like a little, see what it is here, there, I'd be in there. I'd be parked in there. Big massive sheet of foil. Well, it's a long time ago since I've done that like this. But, big sheet of foil, massive sheet. Big roll of it, five metre roll. I got warehouse to my foil. When I were on gear, I used to go warehouse. I had an order in. I used to get about eight rolls, big sheets of it, good stuff. It's like if you've got a car, you're not going to polish it with crap rags, are you? So 
if you've got good heroin, you're not going to put it on that shitty backer foil, are you, that's got crisscross on it. Don't run properly, does it? You want good foil. Big blowtorch lighter. Big old blowtorch lighter. And uh Uh, big pen to roll tube. That's it. I'm honest. That's what I'd be doing if I wasn't doing this. Boxing saved my life from being a miserable heroin addict. But like I said, I want a. Uh, I want your typical heroin addict. But an addict's an addict, isn't it? Whether you, no matter what, where you live or anything like that, or what car you've got, or if you've got a job or out. I had a scrap metal business. Now an addict. Scrap metal business. What a waste of time that one. Going to work, back breaking work, coming in freezing my ass off. Wanting uh wanting foil. I'm gonna go swimming baths, see if I can I'll meet me kids and take them take him after, can't I? So this is where that woman fell earlier. Look at this here. They picked her up. Isn't that good. Right, let's have a look. Up here, swimming baths. Do you know, the other day when I went to took my kids to Smith's, I got a 60 quid ticket in post, but they won't put, didn't put it on my windscreen, they don't have to do that now, do they? For parking and disabled parking. Unbelievable, isn't it? 60 quid for parking in a disabled spot. I'll not do that again, will I? Could get a ticket. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to park in a disabled spot. So I'm not bothering am I? I'm an idiot. There you go. That should do it. Oops. Uh, so that's basically it really. Uh, I'll take a McDonald's or something, eh? Take a McDonald's. Get me a good box, way in it? So at least I've done something, I don't know. Nice to get invited to go watch them, I suppose, isn't it? Throwing me a bone, aren't they? Jesus. Throwing me a bone. <coughs> but, uh No, I'm stopped. You know, next year, you know, next year, right? When I get ready in the next couple of days, next year, I'm going to go a full year without taking cocaine. You know, if you take cocaine and I take cocaine, say, 15 times in one year, each time I take it, it's going to cost 300 quid a time. So that's, what's that? Four and a half grand. I'm not going to take that no more. When you can say you don't have it for ages, then you get, you go out and then it's under your nose, isn't it? 
it's hard to refuse isn't it so I try not to I'm gonna I'm not gonna take it I'm not, I'm not even gonna drink next year no I just want to get out I've started training I've enjoyed it you know what I'm angry that I've not gone tonight because I just don't feel right but I just don't feel right. I just don't feel right at all. But we're getting back to boxing. I'm not happy with current situation with Sky with bias. It's just doing me head in. And people like Tony Bellew should be starting to talk the truth, setting an example, not hanging out at the back of Eddie Earn and Adam Smith and all them kind of people. Because, like I said, Tony, we know what we're going on. We know what's been said. We know how boxers talk anyway, but don't come out and say that you back Dillian White. Can anybody show me a video where Tony Bell used back Dillian White when it all come out six months ago? Because I'm telling you now, there isn't one video. There isn't one video. Not one video at all. All these people after the fight, oh, well, I had you back, Dillian. Let me tell you this. I had Dillian White as guilty, me. I thought, he's guilty, he's done it before, he's done it again, Thomas Howes was spot on. But like I said, Terry Chapman Diamond's video got it off to a T. Terry Chapman Diamond's video got it off to a T. To a T. But... It is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? I know it's harsh and all that and blah de blah, but it's boxing, isn't it? It's the most horriblest sport in the world. It's just one of them things. Just one of them things. I should really go in there, shouldn't I? I should really go in and break them up. That's what I should do. I should really go in there and get them. I'll watch them swim. My little lad Reggie's in uh, an higher class than his twin sister. And she's in bits over it because it's the first time they've been parted. I mean, they're in separate bedrooms at home, but they always wake up. They're always in. Ruby's always in his bed with him. Kids, eh? Um, but other than that, I'm all right. I'm okay. It's uh, it's one of them things, isn't it? But very disappointed with Tony Bell. You very disappointed with Tony. Like I said in video earlier, Tony. We know, we know what you. Uh, what you said when it all came out, we know, and people heard you. Now, if I have to do, I might call these people out on it. So I don't want to do, but can't have you running around saying you backed Dillian White when you didn't. Nobody backed him. They all soon you were guilty, but at least come out. Looking at Thomas Howes' email and the statement he put out, I were like this. If Dillian White's innocent, how's it got in his system? Because your body's supposed to have 0% in your body of this, so it's got in there, somehow you're responsible. Maybe it might not have been intention to cheat. We don't know, do we? But he's been done with it for it before. He's got off with it now, and everybody's going to be experts after the fact, aren't they? And they're all going to be kissing his ass. But these same people that are kissing his ass are all trying to ruin him. So, Eddie Hearn's going to say he had his back in it because he needs him, doesn't he? Eddie Hearn needs him. So, he needs pay-per-view. He needs Dillian White. I mean, they need to come out and tell us what this pay-per-view criteria is because Dillian White's not fought for a European title yet. But his pay-per-view. Good luck to him if you can get it, but does that mean Tom Little might end up on pay-per-view because he hasn't fought for a European title yet. Dave Allen's not fought for a European, is he, pay-per-view? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but what I do know is this. 
the cesspit that is Sky Sports is unbelievable. I mean, look what they did to Dave Allen. The gear say, well, yeah, if you lose against Price, well, there's, there's a gig for you on Sky Pundit work. They stuck him in crowd with a couple of nobodies and pointed a camera at him, but not at the, uh, not at the fight. It was a bit like uh, goggle box. Dave must have got there in his new shirt and thought, what have they done here to me? He used and abused that kid, hadn't they, David Allen? And I feel for him. He used and abused him. And, and he's come out in it with his brain scrambled and he's not even got an, an area belt. Cash Alley's got an area belt at home. Central area belt. It's wrong. What they've done to David Allen is wrong. He's on outside looking in now and it's so bad. And, it, and the best thing that David Allen can do, I think, now is start again, go back to the beginning with your experience and go sign for Dennis Hobson again, Dave. That's what you need to do. And knuckle down and swallow your pride before it's too late. And stop being everybody's punch bag as a sparring partner. Do you want, do you want some sparring work, Dave? 150 quid? Oh, dub, 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 yes. That's what's going to happen. Dave comes down, they punch him about, knock him about, can't drop him. He goes home thinking that, oh, I, 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 he didn't drop me. I can mix it at that level. They've been working on the skills, peppering him, give him a couple hundred quid and he's gone home. That needs to stop, because that's mileage on the clock. Would Peter Fury let Yui Fury go around gyms, letting people knock him about? Hey. Will you let Joshua and other people knock him about? No, he's not going to do, is he? You is a commodity. If you're a factory owner, say for instance, if I, there's a garage for rent down here. If I rent this garage down here and I need, I need, I need uh, a tyre machine to do tyres. Tyre machine, well, like second hand one, a good and 1,500 quid, two grand. See if I go out and buy a new one, seven grand, real McCoy. Am I just going to start throwing it about and not putting lock on it properly and abusing the situation or am I going to treat it nice and look after it you know when you you know when you don't get you've never had much in life what you get you look after don't you like if you buy a car I always look after my cars I keep them pristine condition if there's a scratch on a registration plate I change it all clean all valid you look after things don't you but could you imagine what it'd be like if I had a brand new Mercedes? See, I always get them when they're about four year old, don't I, me? Yeah, we get to pork it. We're four year old when he bought it. I'm the four year old man, aren't I? When, it, when warranty's gone and all that, and it's got about 60, 70 foul on clock, I end up with cast offs, don't I? But I'm happy with that. As long as I'm happy with it, I'm alright. But could you imagine if I had a brand new one? You're going to treat it right, aren't you? Has Dave Allen been treated right by boxing? Did Dennis Hobson treat Dave Allen right? Well, he put him in fights that he knew he could win and he was learning his craft and he was paying him a wage. Every single week, David got a wage. So you're getting paid to go to the gym and you're getting paid when you fight on fight night. And Dave never sold more than seven tickets when he was with Dennis. So... So it's an investment. Dennis saw something in him and he invested. And Dennis dis and he got to a stage where David didn't want to train. So Dennis went, bye bye. Your job is to train, you're coming in overweight. You're not been Jim, see you later alligator. He can um and um and about it, but by that stage Dennis just went, look, in the swamp, kid. In the swamp. See you later alligator, in the swamp, and then some. So they parted, but Dennis likes him. But the moral of the story is, Dave Allen were put in the right fights. He left as an undefeated fighter. What happens? Before you know where you are, he's fighting Lewis Ortiz, a man with 512 amateur fights. Not 350, 512 amateur fights. A two-time Olympian. Multi-nations tournaments and all sorts. What were it, 22 an hour summer? Southpaw, massive puncher. And Dave Allen, 9 and 0. 9 and 0 and a draw, was it? 
goes in with uh, Luis Ortiz. Balls on this kid's heart here, isn't it, Dave? But he knew he were turning up to get beat, didn't he? So what will he have learned from that? Well, what he will have learned from that is that Eddie Hearn didn't really care about his health. But once you've done that, then... You, 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 and you, you're in deep, you might as well just cut for long and you've spoilt your career then, haven't you? You're ruined, you're just known as, oh, novelty act. Dave the novelty actor. Oh, it's Dave Allen here. And you know, I don't know and I feel, listen, I were in a crowd once and Dave Allen's coming out and everybody were like, oh, come on, it's Dave Allen's on. <laughs> Dave Allen's on, hey, come on, look who it is, it's Dave Allen. Funny man on Twitter. Everybody, the old tone of it all, laughed and, hey, go on Dave, it, it wasn't any of that, it's not, nothing was serious about it, it was all like, all like a bit of a laugh and I kind of felt for him really, and, and if people ask themselves this, they'll think, you know what, Porky's right there, everybody started to laugh, it's Dave, oh, it's a bit of a laugh, isn't he? It's Dave Allen, fucking hell, look who it is, go on Dave. Go on. Oh, Dave can take a punch. Ooh. Oh, Dave. Oh, Eddie will bring him back. Don't worry, Eddie will bring him back. He's Dave Allen and Coogan there. He's doing it for views. He's stirring the pot. It's Operation Rhino. It's like this bit of a laugh. Now, they had a similar thing going on with Sam Eggington. But Sam Eggington's weren't a laugh, were it? They were matching him correctly. He had people around him. He's probably got as much talent as Dave Allen, and he's as tough as Dave Allen, but Sam Eggington beat a, a world champion in Paulie Malignaggi. He also went British Commonwealth European champion, didn't he? So he won the, he's won everything except from a world title. Dave's not got an area belt. So Sam Eggington, they kept comparing it with Dave Allen's, but Sam Eggington has got people around him, and John Pegg. Proper boxing people around him. Who's Dave Allen got around him? Mick Marsden, I'd like to wring your neck. I'd like to wring your neck, Mick Marsden. Don't ever come and talk to me, because I know what you are, Mick Marsden. All right, letting a kid like that go in with people like that. You're not a boxing man, Mick. So, you're not a boxing man now. Boxers will fight anybody, but they also need... Saving for themselves. Oh my god, there's a woman turned up there with a nighty on and a coat. Well, I better not point at the camera because she's taking the kids in. Nighty on and a coat. Oh, I'll just get out of bed and take my kids to swimming. But now, nah, Mick Marsden. Mick Marsden's not a boxing man. I'm not bothered his den's mate. What sort of person does that to a kid? Dave Allen's were my mate. I don't speak to him much now. But. No, he ain't got a bad bone in his body, David. He's just money driven, isn't he? Once you get a taste for money, it does all sorts of things to you. Could you imagine Mick Whale doing that to Josh Whale? No. He wouldn't do it to him, would he? Who's looking out for Dave Allen? Martin Theobald made a good point a couple of weeks ago on his podcast, the New Age Podfather, a pod, New Age Boxing or something. He said. Who's looking out for these fighters? Well, Martin will have his manager's licence in two years. So, pitching himself ready, aren't you, Martin? Martin will, be, Martin will be a boxing manager then, trust me. And he might be a good manager if he takes them values into it and doesn't let money control him. He might be a good manager. Personally, I don't want to be a manager myself. I don't mind advising people. You'd be surprised who ask me for advice and who they should fight next and whether they should take this fight or not and I digest it all and I always side with fighter can upset people that I always sided with Liam Cameron against Dennis always saw the fighters side of it ask Chris Smedley he'll tell you that I always see the fighters side of it and then one said to me says sometimes you have to look at it from promoters to kind of side and I can see where Dennis is coming from because he's created a lot of monsters and put a lot of money into a lot of fighters and they've let him down they've let him down but but Liam Cameron's situation this is how I look at Liam's situation UK had gone went after him didn't they and he ain't got the money to take them on Dillian White has UK pick off the weak don't they 
There's the floors all over in that case of Liam Cameron's. I suppose there's floors in anything if you're denying it, isn't there? And you're saying it's contaminated. Point I'm trying to make though is this. Boxing is a cesspit. The bias in boxing is unbelievable. Like Tony Bellew, I backed Dillian White from beginning, I had his back. Tony, that's a lie. And if, you've, if you and if you come out with it again, Tony, I will expose you. I will expose you. I'll show the world what Tony Bellew is. Tony Bellew is the man that's coming out with bullshit in Saudi Arabia. That's what he's done. And like I said, the messages I had off people saying, did you see this video? Did you see this video? I'm like, no, but I have now. I am in shock that Tony Bellew can come out like that. He must be paranoid about something. Or the summit cooking down line. He might be thinking, Tony might be getting itchy feet again, you know. He might be getting itchy feet again. You never know, do you? They see all them pound signs. People lose all their inhibitions. That's what happens. So, all right then. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play your Terry Chapman Dharma's video. People need to follow me on Facebook. Porky's Corner on Facebook. Uh, look at this 17 messages as I turn this phone off earlier. Not seeing it. Not seeing it, Ozzy. You'll have to do your own work and go find it. Go find your own. Go, go, go have a look, Ozzy. What about Spencer Fearing who tarnished Oscar Rivers' name? Yeah, that's another good one. That's a question from a hardcore fan, friend of mine, Dale Nichols. What's going to happen now about Oscar Rivers? So, Spencer Fearon said that Oscar Rivers failed a drug test. He heard off a good source. So, is Tony Bellew going to come out and slander Spencer Fearon because Oscar Rivers didn't fail the source? Oscar Rivers didn't fail the test. Is Tony Bellew going to come out in defence of Oscar Rivers because he's innocent in all this, isn't he? So, do you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know anymore, but like I said, it's becoming a cesspit. Cesspit, that's what it is. But, I think that's it there, but I don't know, mate. I don't know, we'll... Uh, He's probably done that many interviews, mate, of a week, and he's probably lost track with everything he's said. See, the thing is, when you do that many interviews and you're kissing that many backsides, you forget what you said, don't you? Do you know what I mean? But you and I both know that <laughs> what he said to uh, to my man, so he didn't back Gillian White from day one. Do you know what I mean? He may be doing that now on camera, but people know what he was saying behind the scenes. So... Alright mate, but no, uh, it's just one of them things isn't it, yeah, yeah I don't think Bell you were referring to me, I think my mate's got it wrong, I think he's referring to Thomas Hauser, but I, I couldn't give a hoot if he does, I thought Dillian White were guilty myself, if he's got off with it, well there's more questions than, than unanswered isn't there, when you listen to Terry's bit here, I'll add a bit to end to it, and uh, you can make your own minds up, but as far as I'm concerned, there's more unanswered questions regarding the Dillian White saga. Because, this is how I look at it, something's got in his system, and what has got in his system, there should be 0% of that in your body, so how's it got there? I don't know, but it's that minute, they're going to sweep it away. Why is that? Why is that? What about Oscar Rivers? What about Dillian White suing the WBC to give him his mandatory slot, mandatory slot back to fight Wilder? Or is Dillian White going to have two pay-per-views next year and then fight Wilder year after as a mandatory? Is that what's going to happen? 
Because are we going to watch Gillian White in two more pay-per-views for no title? Because that will be 